guess who? What's up? Hey guys, hey Dugan Dude here. It's been a long time uh, since I've actually posted anything on the channel. I think the last video I uploaded was uh, that, that video about uh, Steve and Minecraft, which pretty much threw everyone off guard and broke Twitter. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> hope you guys have been doing fine. Um, I've been awfully busy with uh, work-related stuff, so I haven't been very active on the channel, as you can see, considering how I am working as a teacher, and that has been consuming a lot of my time. As for uh, other projects, I'm trying to see at what point I can uh, release more content for the channel, as well as uh, I'm getting some additional help here and there for uh, upcoming projects. In the meantime, um, let's m might as well check out this other reaction video that we have right now. This time it's about Sephiroth. Um, <clears throat> I'll say this, right off the bat, I'm not much of a Final Fantasy person. I have heard of Final Fantasy VII and how much of a following it's gotten over the years. I know there's an enhanced remake right now on the PS4. <clears throat> I'm aware of Cloud as the main protagonist and Sephiroth being the antagonist. That would be like the equivalent, uh, the, the Zelda equivalent of Link and Ganondorf, respectively, in this case. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, um, also, please excuse the audio quality as well as the image quality in the camera. Um, I wasn't really prepared to record anything during the holiday season, and I'm currently at my sister's place, as you can see. Um, right now, I'm practically recording this from, uh, you know, from these Samsung headphones. So the audio quality is coming from here. Uh, I know it's not exactly the best audio quality, but you have to work with something. As well as the camera is directly from the laptop. It's uh, the built-in camera. I don't know if the resolution's any good. A little blurry at times, but I think it, it can probably hold out. But uh, in the meantime, I guess we can check out the uh, presentation here about uh, Sephiroth. Um, another thing I should point out is that originally I did want to record the uh, the reaction of his reveal, but at the time I was also busy like grading papers. It was the the, the last week of um, <clears throat> of the of the school, uh, you know, before we went to the before we went to the Christmas holiday season. We got the whole uh, Christmas break. During that time, I was like in the middle of grading papers and just finishing up uh, other other uh, class activities that I assigned to the kids, and. It completely slipped my mind. It just caught me completely off guard and I didn't record it. But uh, generally, like everyone else, everyone's reaction was of shock and disbelief. I think my first, the first thing I said was literally, what? Like, I could not believe that this was happening. Um, it practically um, surprised me in, um, <clears throat> in a sense because, um, well, knowing how Square Enix is, with um, Final Fantasy characters in Smash and how stingy they are, especially with the soundtrack, you, you kind of wonder, like, how is uh, how is this possible, right? Because there were other people that were asking for Sora from Kingdom Hearts. There were others that were asking for um, Chrono from Chrono Trigger. Others going as far as demanding Geno, like people. The guys that are asking for Geno, let it go. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. As much as I love Super Mario RPG, and I played that years ago, I loved it, right? Geno is one of the best characters in the game. Don't deny. But Jesus, let it go. They're not going to bring Geno back. You can cry all you want. Those two slots are probably filled in at this point. I don't know exactly what characters are going to come off, uh, come up next just uh sometimes you got to move on you know we've been asking for Gino for what 10 years 12 years unfortunately it might not happen same thing with Waluigi we don't even know if it's going to happen let me adjust myself here but yeah <clears throat> it's really hard to say what's going to like what will be the next character uh, my main concern, based off of some of the rumors that I've been hearing, was that supposedly, and I'm not really sure if it's true, that an Overwatch character is going to make it in uh, in Smash. 
I'm a little mixed. I usually prefer to see more retro characters rather than modern ones. Um, it, it really depends on the, on the character overall. I mean, if it's a... If it's a really good character, I'm guessing they're probably going to include Tracer from Overwatch. I'm, I haven't really played the game myself, to be honest. So I can't really judge in that aspect. But <clears throat> what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I usually prefer to see more retro characters than modern ones. What I mean exactly? Like, we've already catered to the modern audience, right? We already have Steve from Minecraft. But the thing is that there's a lot of hidden potential in other uh, characters that I've always wanted to see. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, Ryu Hayabusa, Ninja Gaiden. Maybe uh, Billy and Jimmy Lee, Double Dragon. You could easily implement them as like, uh, just like the, the same way they did with Ice Climbers. In that same, uh, that same concept. Maybe introduce someone from Killer Instinct. You know, seeing how uh, we already have... Uh, Steve from Minecraft, and we have Banjo Kazooie, which is all, which you know, they're both owned by Microsoft at this point, and we all know that uh, uh, Banjo Kazooie was originally an N64 title by Rare, which was later bought by Microsoft, and then that went downhill. So uh, another one, I was thinking, when it comes to like, um, let's say Killer Instinct, I was either thinking Jago. Or maybe Fulgore, I believe. One of those uh, possibilities, since they're the ones that are the most that have the most potential. Um, I've also considered even like um, who knows? Maybe I'd like to see Battletoads being implemented if if it actually gets the uh, the invitation. Really hard to say, to be honest. Um, what's another one that I've always considered? Hmm. Okay, I had this. Interesting idea recently, a few days ago, and I even posted it on Twitter one time. What if we actually got a Digimon character in Smash? I mean, think about it. Who currently develops uh, Smash Ultimate? Who helps uh, collaborate with Smash Ultimate alongside Sakurai? And Namco. And who currently owns the rights to Digimon? Bandai Namco, in this case. So, it wouldn't be too far off to see Agumon in the future. I personally would love to see it. Heck, just, just the thought of uh, Agumon fighting, I don't know, uh, Pikachu or, uh, let's say, Agumon versus uh, Charizard or something like that. That would be neat. I'm guessing the final Smash would probably be Omnimon or War Greymon at this point. One or the other. But there is, there is some potential there. The thing is that Nintendo has to decide what's uh, what would be the best choice overall. Uh, there are other characters that also come to mind. Let's see. Some would want Spyro. Don't know how that would be implemented. Others would want um, let's see, Crash Bandicoot. That's another good one. Excuse me. Uh, let's see, Lara Croft. That would be an interesting one if. That somehow gets implemented, but that would be Square Enix's decision. Laura Croft would be an interesting one, but uh, you know, since she uses guns, uh, they they might have to omit the guns in favor of other types of weapons. I mean, with the exception of the grappling hook, I think that would work. Uh, uh, another character that I've heard over the years, but I'm not really sure if it's going to happen. Uh, Lloyd Irving from Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Symphonia, I've only played it like, I think, halfway, and I never really completed it. Solid game. Uh, but the thing is that, of course, the characters just don't know when to shut up. That's like my only criticism, because there's just so much... There, there's a lot of conversation, even in the middle of battle, to the point that you just want to yell at the screen to say, Shut up and let me fight! But all in all, I mean, the, the voice acting is okay. Um, the gameplay is neat. It pretty much feels like your average RPG. This was, I think... Made around 2002, 2004. That's the one I remember with Tales of Symphonia. I got a lot of praise over the years. Um, anything else? I mean, still, we, we have those two slots. Uh, I think there's just two slots left. But <clears throat> another one <laughs> that some fans actually want, and people will probably get blown away by it, though I find it like, Almost impossible that they'd include it. 
<laughs> that would be Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Yeah, uh, Scorpion would be an interesting choice, but uh, they would have to tone him down considerably. Not to mention the fatality. And since uh, Mortal Kombat is about blood and gore, I don't think it'll fit very well with the um, with the family friendly nature of uh, <laughs> of Super Smash Brothers. I mean, they they were teetering like right in the middle. They were teetering like between an E10 and a T rating when they introduced Sephiroth and they showed Mario getting stabbed, getting impaled by Sephiroth with that giant sword of his. Geesh, I mean, everyone just lost it. Everyone thought that he was stabbed for real. No, he was dangling by his overall. Whoa. I mean, you seriously want to go for a T rating with this. Sakurai, he's a madman. There's no other way to describe it. I love his dedication, I love his passion, he's the only one that actually understands, uh, like, uh, characters in that sense. Like, he always plays, um, yeah, he, he always plays different, uh, different games just to see what character would properly fit in Smash Brothers. I mean, it got to a point where he was even concerned of revealing any type of information about what game he was playing because of, you know, all the early speculation. And I think it has happened from time to time that uh, if he announces that he played a certain particular game, then uh, <laughs> it's going to cause an uproar, saying that, oh no, this character is going to be in Smash then. Like, oh boy. I mean, I, I understand his frustration. He just can't keep it secret. But then again, also blame the data miners. The data miners, <sighs> I'm, I'm kind of mixed about them. I understand they just build the hype, but at the same time, all the stuff they do, it's it just seems immoral, you know? It's like opening your presents before Christmas. That's not cool. But hey, each to their own, I guess. I mean, there's not much uh, you can do about it. The other man is just, they're, they're overhyping things. They just like to um, reveal, <clears throat> re reveal uh, information beforehand. And anyway, let's go. Ah, konnichiwa, Sakurai-san. Yeah, we're all practicing social distancing because the, well, the, the virus really affected everything. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When it's the Mii Fighters, that usually means the um, honorable mentions of sorts. Let's go. Who do we have? Oh, we got uh, Tifa. Of course, we went to you know, the other uh, Final Fantasy VII characters. And Barrett, that's the other guy, okay. I don't know if they can include Aerith, though. Now, the funny thing is that I'm not much of a Final Fantasy VII fan. But I have... Oh, they did include Aerith. But as you can see, the um, <clears throat> the fan base kind of like spoiled the whole story for me. Uh, especially uh, what happens to her. And what do we got here? Uh, it's a Kobo hat. Alright, that's cute. As for Final Fantasy games, I think I've only played uh, 1, 4, and part of 6. I think I made the most progress with the first one. Oh no! Oh no! No, no, no. I knew it. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I told you. Gino's not gonna happen. I'm sorry. It was going to happen. Someone actually posted that on Twitter uh, just a while ago. I mean, you can sense the saltiness right now. You can sense the saltiness. Sorry, Gino. You're not gonna make the cut. It's already too late. Final Fantasy 7 are being added. 
Aerith, Tifa, and Barrett are included, but they don't come with preset hairstyles. Please customize this as you see fit when creating the Mii Fighter. Now let's get to the main topic, Sephiroth. Who is he? Yeah. Legendary soldier from Final Fantasy VII. He's known for his long sword, the Masamune. Hmm. I'll say this, the Masamune is a popular sword. <laughs> this dynamic range means my job is never boring. <laughs> yeah, that's an incredible range, I'll say that. Okay, taking control of things with introducing the character. Use a special camera if you want to find a retail version of the game. How does he do it? <clears throat> Sephiroth joins the battle. Okay, as he appears in Smash Brothers Ultimate. You have to admit, his most distinctive feature is his long sword. Because the sword is so long, it has a wide reach. He's also relatively tall, meaning he's more prone to getting hit by opponents. And despite his height, he is a lighter character. He gets launched very easily. Regarding costumes, he'll appear shirtless when you select his P7 or P8 variation. All the other color variations are dark, staying close to Sephiroth's image. Player 7 Player 8 allow for you to play using the form that he takes in the original game. Please understand that only the Japanese voice will be implemented. That's fine. His, this is his biggest feature. When Sephiroth is in danger, Winged form will activate, like this. So you get many boosts when growing a wing. First, speed and strength increase a little. You can also perform an extra meter jump. This means you can perform three jumps total. What's most exciting is that all smash attacks will have super armor. Like this. It's a little one-sided when attacking an opponent. However, this doesn't mean you can block damage, so don't overuse it. Hmm. For example, if you get KO'd, you lose the wing. Alright, so it's like a Berserker mode when you have low health. You can also lose it by KOing an opponent. Huh, ah, okay. Cumulative damage isn't the only factor that determines. The overall state of the battle is also a factor. Even when your damage exceeds to 100, the wing still won't appear. And finally it happens. Okay, if it fits in a disadvantage, you can achieve wing form at only 30% damage. You'll see some differences depending on the situation. I'll actually explain Sephiroth's attacks and moves. Before that though, let me mention the sword's sweet spot. There are exceptions, but when performing a slash attack, the sword is strongest just above the middle. You perform the slash attack, in this position this happens. Mm. So the closer you are, the more damage. You know, I find it curious how the, the the name of the sword is Masamune because uh, that sword also appears in Chrono Trigger and it's what uh, what Frog uses during like I think uh, halfway through the game. Really good reach, yeah. Next is the side tilt. 
very long reach. Hmm. So you can aim diagonally. Hard to land, but the reach is long and hit detection is last for a while. You crouch low so you might be able to dodge opponent's attacks and still attack yourself. Side smash the powerful slide, powerful slide cut. That thing has amazing reach. And it can leave you wide open too. Once we like to counter if they are shielding from fight away, so you be careful. The up smash attack. A wide range slash. Hit the ground with the front just by the wide range. Okay. The debris won't emerge unless. He's going to be a tricky one. He's probably going to be an edge guard. I mean, that diagonal stab that he does in the edges, that's enough to just annihilate you. Forward air. The detection area is very small, as you can see. Short hops won't connect. So you got to be precise with that one. The stab wall jump. When, you should, when should you use it? To see if your opponent's like this. That sword is going to be a pain on everyone's side. The reach of that sword is amazing, and it's also going to be a pain, particularly when they recover using that sword. <clears throat> I'm curious as to what players are going to main him now. <laughs> uh, he, he's he's going for like all the tech stuff. <laughs> you hypocrite! Trying to be all tech here. Yeah, this this coming from the guy who says uh, Smash Brothers is a party game when it isn't. Well, we don't see it as a party game. You can use it to intercept attacks. Nice. Hell's Gate. The downward slash. Downward stab, yeah. You might be able to use it to prevent ledge recovery. That's going to be really cheap. Extremely cheap. But you'll just take yourself out of the process, right? Is he broken? I don't know. Let's see. The backward throw. Leaves the opponent upward with a sword. Down throw, we slam. 
ったりとか、えー、とチールドを国主にかかったりとかそういうのに使えると思いますので、えー、いろいろ検討してみてください。He's going to be a tricky one to fight against. Neutral special is one of three moves, depending on how long it's charged. It's going to be a fireball. No charge, it's a flare. Okay. Hold it for a little bit, mega flare. Less range than flare, but it packs some serious power. Right. Charge full, you get Giga Flare. So it's kind of like PK Flash in a sense. It has immense power, yeah. Just burns through with Myra's fireballs there. Cancel out by shielding, okay. Giga Flare can be used mid air. You can always use a Giga Flare like this. Sick combo. That's a sick combo. Giga Flare and a good sword slice. Or grabbing your opponent. Huh. You can't absorb these. But they don't restore. Oh, that's cheap! They're only powerful when they explode. I don't recommend getting hit by a reflective Giga Flare. Yeah, yeah, at least the reflectors work. Shadow Flare, Side B. Pretty mediocre. Hmm. Only does this fire a narrow blast. So I guess that causes a slight bit of knockback. Huh. When it hits an opponent, it'll start circling around them like this. Ah, okay, it surrounds the opponent. With charging up the attack and hitting them repeatedly, you get up to five blasts circling around your opponent. Okay, so like accumulated, accumulated bomb blasts. Here's how much you could use it. Dang! So, Shadow Flare is essentially a double edged sword in that sense. They can be absorbed, they can be reflected too. Ooh, that's going to be risky. And you can pick them up, of course, you can collect them with Villager. You can pick it up for Blast, circling around other opponents. <laughs> Great assist. Uh, the blade dash. It works at any angle. Works like the Firefox, yeah, Fox McLeod's Firefox there. Or you can use it as a fiend, like so. Blade dash. Becomes Octa Slash, which eight times in a row. Nice, you can combo into it. Presently effective for getting KOs, okay. Use them on the ground and stop at the edge. Of course, <clears throat> like if you go with like Captain Falcon's side B. Blade Dash. And that's the Octa Slash. Wow, you can see the difference. One of the primary uses. Okay, 
それを使って攻撃をするという手もありますがこの違いにはご注意ください次に北久方座の天候と言いますハニカムシールドから天候を一連で放つのでカウンターのように使えますカウンターと異なり This move will still trigger even if the opponent doesn't attack. Ah, so this is a variation of the counters. Okay. The target gets stronger based on how much damage is taken. Doesn't prevent attacks from behind. And you can't reflect projectiles, but you can stop them. Counter attacks will break it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, you have to be very careful with that one. I had a feeling the supernova was going to be it. Jeesh. You notice that each opponent had a different status effect? Hmm. How so? Let's pause as it's happening. Shield break, reverse controls, and launch. Like in the original game, this attack is designed to cause a variety of random status effects. Dizzy sleep, flow, flower bloom, reverse controls. So that's enough to stun and annihilate. Damage accumulates with a flower. With a what? Okay. This is reversed. This is a scary one. Ah, the reverse controls are so. When the controls get inverted, you get you lose your sense of orientation. We also made some changes to cause Final Smash for even Final Smash version five. But is this exclusive to the Sephiroth fight? Yeah. You probably already knew this. Clouds, even number color variations are both sleeve and sleeveless. Hmm. Right. The Northern Cave. It was the scenes from the end of Final Fantasy VII. Well, it was unavoidable. If you want to avoid spoilers, you might want to stop watching now. Sakurai, the internet already did it for me. But we're talking about a game from over 20 years ago, I know. Let's see the events will play out the same with Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> Yes, we're going to see Aerith get stabbed in high death. Oh, boy. The promised land found the city of the reunion. Pretty basic platform. Several planets destroying black magic meteor has been activated. To stop it, the party pins their hopes on defeating Sephiroth and releasing the white magic holy, which Aerith sacrificed her life for. そしてその後古代史に起因されデシディアファイナルファンタジーのステージに採用されたことを見て
そしてこれが封印されたホーリーですホーリーが発動しホーリーが発動しそしてパーティーは脱出を図りますイゲロそしてガドリアが飛び出し,、ね、飛び出しメテオの都市に回ります。ハイエンドはここで特に第三形態になっていたりします。しかし、ホーリーが発動するのが遅すぎたと言われてますが、メテオを止められません。そこで星の力であるライフストリームが湧いてきて加算する。But is that going to be a hazard in the middle of battle? こういうお話をクルーズステージというのは今までになかったかもしれません。お楽しみいただければと思います。Yeah, just displaying the,、uh, the final events of the, the game, I guess. I'll show you the character in action. Classic mode. Highest intensity. I'm surprised they haven't included anything from Monster Hunter yet. Aside from Rathalos here. Again, when it comes to like, you know, big RPGs like,、uh, like that one in Monster Hunter, I usually play like some games that are usually like shorter in, in terms of time and, and game length. Well, time, game length, you, mean, you know what I mean. I, I'm usually like. More interested in playing shorter games than longer ones. RPGs, that really depends. If it has an engaging story, I'll check it out. But if it's a, a game about just collecting,、um, let's say, items just so you could、uh, sell it to a shop and just upgrade constantly,、um, I, I don't know. I, I tried to get myself in、uh, Monster Hunter Try. Still, it's, it's a good game, though maybe a little too advanced for my liking. <laughs> yeah, this brings back memories. That guy was such a pain in brawl. I have to memorize his entire moveset. I don't know if it's any different now. Granted, I don't have Smash on the. On,、uh, I don't have the Switch. I don't have my own Switch yet, but my niece does have、uh, the Switch with Smash Ultimate with no DLC. I don't know if she will get the DLC yet at some point. What the? Really now? I really need to play the classic mode of Smash,、uh, Smash Ultimate. That's like the only thing I haven't tried out because I've been more focused on the one on one battles rather than the classic mode. The marks split apart, huh? Oh、man, this is the game that just keeps on giving. No other way to describe it. You can finish him off, no problem. Those eyes are also kind of gross. Yeah, I was about to say. Now he fights Dracula. I'm surprised Dracula isn't a playable character. The real fight starts now. 
taking the initiative, right? I really need to check out the other Castlevania games, the one on the PlayStation in particular. Because I'm, I'm more accustomed to like the older Castlevania games. I, I have played the ones on the Game Boy Advance as well, and the DS. Let's see. Ganon's Battle. This is amazing. I should really play the uh, classic mode more often. I know, the tail is his weakness. Keep going, keep going, you're almost done. Nice. He just leaves the scene. Total tough guy. Take a Bowser, just like Melee. A much wider reach. Oh. Fighting him in melee was tough. I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's any tougher in uh, in brawl because I don't. I don't think I've got to a point of fighting Giga Bowser. Ooh. Nice. And he was going to vanish into the darkness. Intensity has grown. Master hand and crazy hand. Don't go dying on me. Making the screen so narrow. I want to take them down there. Okay. Okay, they're both stunned. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Serious bind, serious bind, careful. Whoa. Like the opponent telling me, come on. Like that wasn't going to work. Crazy hand is left. Boom! Farewell. He is a master. It is his game after all. As for the song list, oh boy. Here's the song list. So it's not just two tracks. Four songs are new arrangements. They all turn out magnificent. 
Thank you, Square Enix. We only had two songs from Final Fantasy. A lot of people would like to have more music from the series in this game. We were met with some challenges. What challenges? The character is featured in a different game or appears in another game as a part of a collaboration. There are some cases in which songs from the original game aren't included. Need approval from all the copyright holders in all the regions. It's always a copyright dispute. In some cases, we only need approval from one company. In other cases, however, the copyright is shared among multiple countries. Or depending on the country, copyright holders may vary. Copyrights. Uh, we only include the songs in the game after all. This is <laughs> he is going above and beyond. Next, the release date. December 22nd. Today's the 17th. That's literally like... Huh. Five days from now. Always been big news. Which becomes just part of the group of the character select team. Because there are so many fighters to choose from. I'm wondering if that's ideal. Of the boss character wanted to give him a special spotlight deserving of bosses. Special spotlight. Sephiroth challenge. What is this? Special limited time mode where you can fight Sephiroth as a boss character. Hmm. So you can fight against Sephiroth before he, he becomes a playable character. Huh. It will be available from the 17th to the 22nd. Five days? Yeah, I figured. You have to buy the DLC. Only slash version 5 will also be added to the player 2 variation of Cloud. Right. I was developing this mode with the idea that it was going to be lots of fun to play, but the workload ended up being much more than expected. This mode can only be played for five days. Hope you try the very hard difficulty using various fighters and tactics. You can sever off as a boss. Wow. What else? For battlefield, small battlefield, big battlefield, final destination. Okay, you can customize a, a random sound that will pick for each, uh, each platform. You still haven't showed Kirby's design, though. That's his victory pose? I had a feeling they were going to go with that. That's evil. I love it. This time around, we had some difficulties recording. There was a problem with the recording equipment, and it looked like we were picking up some noise. Yeah, the recording was fine by me. Well, that was impressive. They didn't really reveal how Kirby was going to be like. But overall, the presentation, a lot of fun. So I, well, there, I kind of question a few things here and there about the uh, the gameplay and how, um, 
<clears throat> well, I'm still kind of questioning like how the gameplay is going to be like, you know, fighting against him in particular. He's going to be a cheap character. I mean, that, that sword that actually goes through the, the platforms. I mean, those that are constantly like hanging off the edge, they're going to get stabbed out. Stabbed out completely. Uh, anything else to add regarding uh, the whole scenario? Mm, I'll say this. I'm at least impressed that they added more uh, <laughs> more Final Fantasy music because they were kind of stingy. Uh, Square Enix. I understand if it was a copyright issue, but jeesh. Come on. You could have at least added three or more. Because they only had like one track. And uh, I think it was in Smash Wii U. And in this one. And now they started implementing more tracks. It's about time. I'll say that. Well, anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video. It's a lot of fun to watch. A lot of fun to check out. The breakdowns overall. And, uh, well, for the Geno players, I'm sorry. I said it wasn't going to happen. There you go. <laughs> uh, might as well. Uh, we'll have to wait and see who else is going to be chosen. But anyway, that's enough for now. And uh, until next time. Take care. Bye-bye.